Today we're going to look at campaign finance. And when we talk about campaign finance, we're talking about money in government, money in politics, excuse me, what it costs to run for office, who can give money, the rules that it comes comes along with all that money, uh, those kind of things. And first of all, you don't have to write these numbers down, but I want you to just take a look at what it, what candidates have spent or, or what presidential elections have spent. And if you notice from 76 to 2016, it's steadily going up. There are some years that the numbers go down some, but the trend is it, it's going up and up. And it's a, a remarkable number. 2016, the candidates running for president spent $2.3 billion. That's a lot of money. And you kind of wonder, where does that money go? Well, a big chunk of it goes to commercials. We already saw that. But it also goes to travel and hotel and food and having campaign offices in every state, in every major city, in every state. So there is a lot of expense when it comes to running for president. We probably are spending a ridiculous amount of money on this, but nonetheless, the candidates spend a lot of money. And it's not their own money. They're getting campaign donations, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. You don't have to write these numbers down either, but again, just to get some idea of how much candidates have spent. Now, you don't have to spend the most to win. In 2016, Trump didn't spend as much as, as Clinton did and won. You don't have to spend the most in order to win, but you have to spend a lot to have a chance of winning, to get your name out there, to make these campaign signs and campaign commercials, and to be able to travel to each state. So in 2016, I wanted to show you this. Hillary Clinton, uh, her campaign committee spent $563 million, and then outside money, outside people spending money on her behalf. And the same thing with President Trump, and we get them idea. Now, Gary Johnson received the third most votes in that election. We know that Gary Johnson didn't come close to winning, but he spent about $12 million, add over here about $13 million, $13.5 million, which is quite a bit of money. But it pales compared to the amount of money that the two major candidates spent. And as we looked at minor parties before, one disadvantage a minor party has is they just don't have the money. They don't have the support from the, the people. They don't have the membership, the, or I guess the, the party doesn't have the membership. But third-party candidates just at the national level can't compete with the major candidates because they just don't have anywhere near the money. Makes it difficult. There are campaign finance laws. Now, what campaign finance laws are, are laws that regulate how much money that individuals can give to candidates, how candidates can spend that money. Uh, we worry about corruption in government. So if candidates get money and then spend it on their own personal use, let's say that I'm running for president and I collect money from my donors and you give me this money and I spend it to buy myself a new car or a new TV or to pay my kids college. That doesn't seem right, does it? Well, Congress has passed laws in the past basically saying what you can spend money on. It has to be campaign related. It can't just be whatever. Uh, and they also have laws about how much money individuals can give to a candidate. And we'll talk about that here in, in a second too. So in, in this campaign cycle, and this campaign cycle is, every, is a two-year cycle, so 2019 and 2020 is the campaign cycle, individuals can give $2,800 to a candidate and, and then give $5,000 to, to PACs. $2,800 may seem like a lot of money, but, but it may not be. Let's just pretend. Pretend that you are a millionaire, a multimillionaire. You're worth, you know, $300 million dollars. And you support Tom Grody for president. And you would like to give me a million dollars. Well, you can't. The law does not allow you to give me a million dollars to my campaign fund as I run for president. And that may seem wrong. And they say, well, you know what? If I want to spend a million dollars on a house or a million dollars on cars or a million dollars on anything, I can't. It's my money. Why can't I give it to that candidate? Why can't I give candidates as much money as I want? 
Well, we have these laws in place because we're afraid that candidates may feel like they owe their donors. Let's say that you give me a million dollars. And let's say other people also donate money because I get my money when I'm running for office. I get that money from donations, from individuals, from PACs, from interest groups. So I get that in money from individuals. Well, let's say that lots of people gave me an average donation, which is like $75. But you gave me a million dollars. And let's say there's a piece of legislation that comes in that I need to either sign or veto. And I think it's best for the country, but it would be bad for your particular business. And you gave me a million dollars. Do I feel like I owe you? Have you essentially bought my loyalty by giving that much money? And that was our concern. If individuals can give unlimited amounts of money, would they, would candidates really feel like they're only working for those huge donors who have given them money? And that's, a, I think, a very legitimate concern. You know, um, it protects our democracy from that influence of money, or at least that's what it's intended to do, to protect us from somebody essentially buying candidates. I hope that makes sense to you. That's why there is a limit. Now, if you go back here and you see you can give $5,000 to individual PACs, remember PACs are the political wing of interest groups. So let's use the NRA because they're an easy one. Uh, most of us understand what the NRA stands for and, and, and supports. You can give money to a candidate. You could give money to me, $2,800. You could also give money to other candidates, maybe a governor candidate, maybe a Senate candidates, and so on. So you could give $2,800 to different candidates, but you can also give $5,000 $5, to individual PACs. Um, and those, be like, the NRA. And the NRA may use some of that money to support me or candidates similar to myself. But you, So there are limits uh, on what you can give. When, when we talk about, well, where do candidates get their money, I've already mentioned this, private contributions. Now, private contributions are money given to the candidate from individuals or interest groups or businesses or, super P, or PACs or so on. Those are what we talk about, individual contributions or private contributions, and that's where the candidates get their money. They aren't spending their own money. I know President Trump in the last election said he was spending his own money, but he wasn't. He was essentially taking a loan from himself, and he paid himself back with contributions that came from individuals. So there's a lot of fundraising goes on if you're going to run for president or any political office. PACs, I mentioned before, political action committees, um, and they're trying to support their interest group. So they spend money to elect or defeat candidates that promote or, or that are they have a positive feeling about, that they think will support their particular interest group. That's what we mean by political action committees. So most PACs represent businesses. Super PACs are a little bit different. Super PACs began in 2012 with a court ruling where the Supreme Court said that giving money in politics is akin to freedom of speech. Just like you can't tell an individual, hey, you can't say support in somebody because you have freedom of speech. The Supreme Court ruled that giving money is akin to that. It's basically the same as free speech. Now, that didn't mean that Congress had to throw out that $2,800 rule, but it did change some things, and it created a new thing known as super PACs. And super PACs are really taken up. PACs, super PACs, are PACs that are organized to help or hurt a specific candidate. So they're candidate-based. So you could have a super PAC that would support me for president. Let's say that one of you really liked me, and you can only give $2,800, so instead you decide to start a super PAC, a Grody for President Super PAC, except you can't use my name in it. Those are the rules. So you make it something like America is Great Super PAC. And America is Great Super PAC is a pro Tom Grody for President Super PAC. And you collect money, and you use that money to help me get elected. Now, we can't work together. I can't 
tell you, hey, I need commercials run in these states, but you can run commercials anywhere you want uh, that are pro Grody super P or, or commercials. Or you could be an anti candidate. Maybe we have another group that dislikes me and they create an anti Grody super PAC. They give it some other name, Protecting America. And they can run commercials that are anti Tom Grody stuff. Um, and, and do things that try to hurt my chances of getting elected. They are supposed to be independent of the candidate, meaning that I can't work hand in hand with the super PAC. The difference is people can give an unlimited amount of money to super PACs. This is somewhat concerning. Remember that, that the worry we had of the, the influence of money in politics? Well, here becomes a, a way of getting around that rule. You can only give me $2,800, but you can give the super PAC that supports me an unlimited amount of money, literally millions of dollars. And, and those who have millions of dollars sometimes do give that. Let's come back. We'll, we'll come back to that here in a second. I want to show you this, individual donors to super PACs in 2016. We talk about millions. Thomas Steyer gave $89 million in 2016. Sheldon Alderson, or Adelson gave 77, almost $78 million, and so on. We look at these names of people, and we're talking about millions of dollars that they're giving. You know, you got to go down to 50 or 100, and they're still giving over a million dollars to different groups that are either pro or anti candidates. Remember, we said, you know, we can't compete with that. Well, I can't give a million dollars. I can't give a thousand dollars. I need money for my own bills and to help my own kids through college and so on. Most of us cannot compete with this. Most of us don't have the money to give, you know, literally thousands of dollars, versus, let alone millions of dollars. And this is the worry here. Do these super PACs, do these people who give so much money to super PACs, are they essentially buying uh, the, the, the candidates, buying the, the uh, loyalty of those candidates? And I hope not, but it's hard to say. Uh, and that's the concern, and it is, you know, I think it's a very legit concern. Okay. So let's go back to the, the FEC, the Federal Election Commission. If you're going to have laws, you have to have somebody to enforce those laws. You know, our, our state legislature make law, makes laws, uh, you know, and if they're criminal laws, then we have the police and then the, the prosecutors that help to enforce those laws. Well, campaign finance laws has to have somebody too. And since they're federal, they have a federal commission, the Federal Election Commission, and they are in charge of enforcing campaign finance laws. So all money that if I'm running for president, any money given to me, I have to report, I think it's quarterly, four times a year, how much money I have and who gave me that money. And that's all public record. So you can see who has given money to Joe Biden or to, to President Trump or anybody, somebody running for governor, Governor Nome or any other candidate. That money is all recorded in the FEC, and you can see how much money individuals have given and so on. Congress makes the laws, uh, and they come. They give the FEC the power to enforce, but the, the FEC is not a very powerful organization. If you want to watch something interesting, watch this Daily Show video on the FEC. I'm not going to show it on this PowerPoint, but it is linked to my PowerPoint on my web page. It's kind of interesting. And then this is a little bit older one, but Colbert had done some things with Super PACs. He actually won a Peabody for his work on investigating Super PACs. It's kind of interesting. There's a term known as soft money. Now, soft money is not as big as it used to be, but soft money is a slang term for ways of getting around campaign finance laws. So let me give you an example. You can only give me $2,800. Let's say I'm running for president. You can give me $2,800, but you would like to give me more, but you can't legally. Well, luckily for you, I'm having a meal in which I will speak, and it's a $10,000 a plate meal. 
So if you come to that meal, you give me $10,000 and that gets you essentially a ticket to that meal. And then you can listen to me speak. Technically, you're not, it's not a campaign contribution because you're paying for a meal. Realistically, it's a campaign contribution. And not only that, you can bring your spouse. Let's say you're married and have four kids. You could uh, pay for a meal for yourself and your spouse and each of your four kids. So that's a total of $60,000. You're essentially giving my campaign without actually giving my campaign money through a direct donation. That's called soft money, and those things happen. It's kind of a, a legal way of breaking the law, so to speak. Doesn't happen as much. It used to be a bigger thing. I used to spend a lot more time on it, but I don't anymore because rather than figuring out a way to get around the rules, you could just give an unlimited amount of money to a super PAC that supports me. That's pretty much all we're going to cover on money, but I do want you to realize that money is a huge aspect of elections. If you don't have money, you if, if you can't raise money, excuse me, there's no way that you're going to win an election. All right, have a good rest of the day.